We're back. We're back. I'm Dave Donaldson. Welcome back to Grip Tips. Today we're taking a look at another aperture light called the Nova P300C. First and foremost, I just want to get this out of the way that Aperture did send me this light in trade for an episode, in my personal opinion. Uh, and needless to say, before I opened it up, <laughs> I was pretty excited. The first smaller box that they sent me is actually their soft box attachment that you can throw on this light. And we'll get into this a little bit later, but the case comes in kind of like a briefcase style and also has an elastic strap on the back so that you can throw it on the handle of most rolling luggage. Super lightweight, but we'll dig into this a little bit later. Now into the bigger box we'll go and we'll pull out our Pelican style rolling hard shell case that also has these handles on three of the sides and also there's an extendable handle uh, for rolling the case around. Now the case by itself is actually kind of feels more like 50 pounds ish uh, but that's not exactly how much the light weighs that's just with everything together inside of this hard shell case it feels about 50 pounds so if you can lift a mambo combo stand you'll be fine. There are six latches holding the case shut two on each side where the handles are and voila the Nova P300C. It's pretty. One of the first things that you'll notice inside of the case is Aperture sending some of their sticker love per usual. They've also sent their lightning clamp, which I'm loving with the other units that I have. And they also give us this 10 foot XLR. Next to that, on the other side of the yoke, you have the control box, which can be lifted out with this cable that they attach to it. You can also see right off the bat where the XLR is going to attach to the light. And the control box also has DMX capabilities as well if you are working more in a theater, soundstage kind of arena. You have a 20 foot power con cable that's gonna plug directly into the unit itself. And they also give you a two foot XLR for cable management. The unit itself has a protective film on the front of it. So make sure that you tear that off first before you use the unit. You'll also find one of those gel silica packets, which tastes disgusting, but peeling the film off was just satisfying. Once we're done with that, we'll head up our light on a stand and the light itself actually weighs about roughly 23 pounds. So if you can lift up most 25 pound shot bags, this shouldn't be an issue for you. It can be mounted to either a 5 8 baby pin or you can mount it to a combo stand. They even went a little further and made a drill and tap to screw your knob into the yoke for safekeeping. They also added hooks for cable management and right off the bat, you can see that the light has full 360 degrees of tilt on the yoke and an amazing locking handle, which can be pulled away from the light and repositioned if need be. So first we're gonna plug in all of our goodies, the power con cable, just press in and turn until it snaps into place. And then our XLR, I'll use the shorty since I'll be mounting the control box to the back of the unit first, which by the way, the Nova has a built-in ballast and then the control box itself can be mounted to the lightning clamp style bracket just by opening the bracket and slapping the back of the control box into place. However, if you wanted to mount the control box to a stand, which is how I'm about to use it, you could do that as well with the lightning clamp that's in the case in combination with the 10 foot XLR. To power up, you just need to tap the power button located on the left side and boosh, the light is up. First, we'll talk about the knobs. The knob on the top right will give you control of the intensity along with triggering effects and making selections. The bottom left will control your CCT or rather your color temperature, which can go anywhere between 2000 and 10,000 degrees Kelvin. And lastly, bottom right is your green slash magenta shift, which in the world of gels is your plus and minus green. Now I do like the knobs, but I do have one small little critique. I was trying to get to a specific number and if you spin the knobs too fast, you'll jump that number as the increments change depending on how fast you spin the knobs. Slow spin will be tenths of a percent, then 1% increments, and finally 10% increments. But getting to 10% increments was really easy in almost kind of a frustrating way. The other issue I had on the control box was just simply the way I was trying to show you the knob, but it was how soft the preset buttons were. When I was spinning the color temperature knob, I accidentally hit the preset buttons a couple of times. Now, how big of a deal is that? Not, not really. I mean, I, the way that I'm trying to present it here, you know, I've, I'm trying to Vanna White it a little bit and I'm, I'm trying to spin the knob in a way that you probably would never spin. No, nobody, nobody spins a knob. Nobody spins a knob like this. They, they do this, not, not, not this this. But if we hit the light mode, this is where we can toggle into our world of possibilities, tabbing into effects mode. We're going to start from the very top where we have club lights, uh, where we have other options in these effects, such as how many colors we want to add. In this case, we can do up to 24. Uh, we can also change the speed in which these colors shift, and we can also change our intensity. And by the way, you can also turn the light on and off just by clicking intensity. So our next effect is paparazzi, and they've had that for a while now, so nothing really too new there. Lightning as well, although for the effects that require a trigger, that can be done by pressing the intensity knob for the trigger button. TV is pretty much the same as it was on the 300X, being able to change between warmer, natural, and cooler colors. Candle is a new effect, which I thought was kind of weird because this unit also has the fire effect, uh, but there is kind of a small, distinct difference between the two. Candle has this kind of whipping kind of feel, where the fire effect has more of a pulsing kind of feel. 
Explosion is also much like lightning where you can trigger it, but the explosion also has the ability to pretty much change to any color, whether that's an XY value, a source, or a color temp. Faulty Bulb, like Pulsing, has the ability to change from source, CCT, or HSI. Welding is a new effect that also has the same customization as Faulty Bulb and Explosion. There's also the classic cop car effect, which pretty much everybody and their mother loves. Color Chase is also an effect that will basically roam around a color wheel, but you can change exactly how saturated you want those colors to be, or even the speed. Party Lights also have the exact same options, but the main difference between Color Chase and Party Lights is that Party Lights are a little bit more gradual with the transition, where Color Chase is a little bit more hard hitting. There's also fireworks, and I forgot to shoot it, but basically you now have the option to have a different color temp, a hue, or you can do a combination of the two, which is really nice to see because we all know that fireworks come in all different colors. Jumping out of our effects by pressing the light mode button, we can jump down to some of our other options, such as RGB, which will change the light's color and brightness due to the intensity percentage of that particular color, whether you intensify the red, green, or blue diodes. Now hitting the light mode button again, we can now go into our XY mode, and I've never really used it before, to be honest, but this is saying on an XY color chart, what color do you want? Now back in the light mode menu, we can pop into source mode, and you can easily try to just match colors you know are already available in the world, instead of just trying to guess how to match it. This can at least get you in the ballpark of what you're looking for, and I would totally name off all of them, but there are a lot of them, and I think that that would just kind of make this episode a little bit annoying, so instead of doing that, that, what I'll do is just put it at the very, very end of the episode. That way you guys can see what each one of them look like. Back in light mode again, you can tap the gels menu, which will give you a list of over 300 industry standard gel looks from either Roscoe or Lee filters. Yep, definitely not going to go through all of them today, but you do have the option to decide what light you would like to portray through a gel, whether that's tungsten or daylight color temps, and then you can add a gel to it from the list that they have. No cutting, no frames, nada. If you, if you gel this light, I will find you. CCT is the basic color temp mode, so no other colors than what we initially started playing around with. HSI light mode is hue, saturation, and intensity, so you are basically taking a color wheel, and if you have a specific color you use for, say, a brand, you can dial in the degree and saturation to match that based on a 360 degree wheel. So that's the light mode menu, and much unlike my bedroom, that's where all of the magic happens. Let's take a look at some of the preset buttons. On the bottom of the control box, you'll notice four preset buttons, one, two, three, and four, and they're very, very simple to set up. Dial your light to whatever you want, and when you're happy with what you have, press and hold any of the buttons to assign it to that particular number. The unit will ask you, replace preset number, yes, press the knob until it clicks, and now you've made a preset. Now a little bit of advice from me, I'm going to set all of my preset numbers to 65, 56, 44, and 32. And why? Because pretty much those are going to be the four main color temperatures that you're always going to see on set all the time. And as far as intensity for each one of those uh, color temperatures, I'm going to set it at 50% because that's a good uh, point to start at because you're either going to need to go higher or lower in intensity. Lastly, I want to show you the basic menu and not too much into detail, but it has DMX capabilities like I showed you guys earlier. Fan mode to switch between force and auto, dimming curves, linear, log, exponential, and S curve. Back in the menu, freak selection because we going to get freaky. This is for the high speed slow motion guys out there for when you have flicker, you can dial it away in this section. Number one is actually for 20,000 hertz and as you dial it to the next setting, it will decrease the hertz by 200. So two is actually 19,800 hertz, three is 19,600, et cetera, et cetera, until you get to 10, which will actually be 18,200 hertz. And just so you guys know, it's kind of a fun fact, all Aperture products, uh, whether you can dial the hertz or not, they're all starting at at least 20,000 hertz. Back in the menu, we also have Bluetooth reset, which we'll get into in just a minute. Fix your serial number, which I will not show you because it's the unit's serial number. You can also update the firmware on the unit. You can find out the unit's current firmware version just to make sure that you're up to date. You can also change the language between English and Chinese because we all know that's the only two languages that ever existed. And last but not least, exit. Now we're gonna head back over to the Bluetooth reset though, and this is how you're going to pair this light with your phone to use the Cytus light. Citus, I almost said Citus lap. Slap in Citus lap! You'll set up a new scene and hit the plus button in the top right hand corner. Then the app will search for a Bluetooth signal coming from the light. Now over on the control box, you will navigate to the Bluetooth reset under the menu button. And when yes is highlighted, press the intensity wheel in. The Bluetooth will start to load and your phone will see the light. Tap the Nova and hit set up on the bottom. Citus will then load the menu for the fixture and when it hits 100%, hit OK on the bottom. After that, tap the Nova on your phone and now you have complete control of it within the app. 
All the options discussed earlier at your fingertips, super responsive, love this app, Aperture, nailed it per usual. This is also a much cleaner way to look at all the gels that you have available, and I love that there's a color swatch above the name of the gels because I haven't used every gel in the book, admittedly, but this just takes the guessing game away. And not to mention, it also gives me kind of an idea to buy other gels for some of my fixtures. You know, I have like a, a standard tweeny behind me. I've got a 1K over my head. Um, and I don't know necessarily what that tungsten is going to be with, with like, I don't know, uh, plus green or something like that. So it's kind of a nice way to you know, physically see what is that going to look like if I were to buy that gel for that light. You can also do the color picker, which is a great feature if you have a specific color on set, whether that's a light or just a random color in the room. For instance, this red bar sign that I have, I just get the red to fill up the middle circle and then hit pick up. And now the light will match the color I shot. I also wanted to visit the XY menu I mentioned earlier because there's three different color spaces this light can cover, uh, which are A gamut, A standing for aperture, meaning it will give you the max color range this light is capable of producing. There's also DCI P3, which is the color space most monitors can handle. And then there's BT709, which is the color space found in most common Rec. 709 footage. But you can see the X and Y line going horizontal and vertically, which can help pick a color based on coordinates. Or if you want to, in the app, you could just roam around the the spectrum to find what you're looking for. Now we're gonna go back to Aperture Softbox for the fixture in this brief. Uh, there is some grid diffusion with a 40 degree egg crate for more control of the beam angle as the light itself does have a 120 degree beam angle. Uh, I won't go into too much detail here because if you've ever put together a softbox, it's pretty much the exact same process, tent poles and everything. But back over on the fixture, there are these slots where the frame will slide into and lock into place. This button here is the softbox frame release button. So if you are looking to pull away the softbox, you'll press that button in and you can pull out. You made it dirty. Pervert. So to wrap this up just a little bit more, uh, the Nova P300C, 300 meaning how many watts that it's actually gonna take. That's actually not true with this unit. Uh, in fact, this pulls in 360 watts. Um, so in the case of amperage, paper amps, uh, amps anyway, we're talking 3.6 amps that we can actually pull um, to power this light. Uh, Aperture has actually already suggested that they're going to say like it's 4 amps. If you look at the spec sheet, it'll say 4 amps, but it's really like 3.6, uh, which means you can hook up roughly three of these uh, on a 15 amp uh, uh, outlet. If that was kind of an older house style, older power inside of the house, 15 amps to play with three of them, or you could put five of them on a 20 amp circuit. Now that's the AC power side of it, but on the DC side of it, you can actually power this light with 24 to 48 volts DC power, which means it's totally possible to power this off of just batteries. And I would totally show you, but I don't, I don't have any dionic batteries. Um, really would like to get my hands on them. And it's to my understanding that Aperture is also gonna come out with their uh, power base station. Um, I've been checking it out online. Uh, so I'm really kind of curious to see how that's gonna work as far as the full build, if you're just trying to go off of just batteries. Build quality. Uh, I love the build quality of this. Um, I was kind of, I, I did hear that they were saying that it was aircraft aluminum and I was actually kind of curious because I know that some of the speed rail and most of uh, all the aluminum that's used inside of Grip and Electric is usually 6061T6 aluminum. Uh, this is actually 6063T5 aluminum. So it's still aircraft grade. Uh, but it's also not as strong as the 6061T6, which I'm absolutely fine with because at the end of the day, the metal that's on the back is just protecting all the internals of this light. It's not gonna, it's not like I'm gonna need to rig this up structurally with something. Uh, it's just simply there to protect it. And the plastic on the side is also some very uh, durable plastic. Um, but in comparison to what most of the other tools are there for, I mean, most of the other tools that are made with the 6061T6. Those are usually for like more structural things such as um, building a menace arm or building an eight by eight, you know, where you really need that rigidity to make sure that it's going to stay in place. Uh, but for this being the housing for it, I'm actually really impressed. It's actually kind of more of like overkill for this light, but I would rather they overkill it than to open it up and be like, oh my God, there's plastic everywhere. You know what I mean? So you guys did a, you guys did a hell of a job on that, uh, that build. But likewise, sorry, Ted. Uh, it's definitely not a sky panel killer, um, at least not for the S60C. For the S30, however, in just those two lights, this is actually a nice light in between those two lights, um, from power consumption to lux to form factor, all of it. Form factor wise, in comparison to the S30, the Nova is a little wider, but a little shorter than the S30, and the S60C is much wider and much taller than the Nova. 
Likewise, and Lux-wise, uh, the S30C came in at 5,400 Lux, the Nova came in at 9,000 Lux, and then you have the S60C, which came in at 11,100 Lux at one meter away. Uh, so you can see right there, as far as the Nova is concerned, it's not as uh, dim as the S30C, uh, uh, but it's also not as bright as the S60C. So again, right in the middle. I'm going to be honest, build quality and all the way around, this kind of kills the S30 um, completely. I mean, I'm just trying to give my, my personal opinion. And also with that, likewise, uh, there's the price point. The Nova, everything that you saw in this episode today comes to be about $2,100. Um, but to buy the S30C is $4,500 and you haven't even bought accessories for it yet. Uh, so does it kill SkyPanel? Yes and no. Um, I think it kills the S30C, but I don't think it is going to kill the S60. Uh, although, who knows? Maybe Aperture probably comes out, what I would only assume would be called the Supernova, uh, but we'll see. So before you go, remember that after I do my little sign-off here that I am going to play all of those different uh, source types uh, after I sign off. So make sure to stick around for that. Uh, but Aperture, thanks again for sending me this light. I think it's an awesome kit. Uh, I definitely want to buy another one. Thank you for also popping my RGB cherry. I've never had an RGB light. Uh, so that was a hell of a way to do it. Sadly, that is all that I have for you guys today. If you liked today's episode, please let me know in the comment section below. You can also follow me on Twitter right here. Don't forget to hit that uh, subscribe button and we'll see you on the next one.